So, The Penguin, I apologise for not reviewing episode 3 last week, I really should have, but things piled up and I didn't get the chance. What I'm going to do is first review episode 4, and then afterwards, if you still care to know what I think about episode 3, you'll have the chance to hear my thoughts. Episode 4 begins just before the end of episode 3, but this time we see the events from Oz and Sophia's perspective. We hear the Moronis tell Sophia that Oz killed her brother, which understandably makes Sophia silently freak out on the spot. However, you can tell from her facial expressions that she just wants to lash out. She had just started to trust this man, and that trust has now been instantly shattered, leaving her bent on revenge. But of course, Vic comes to Oz's rescue, and much of this episode is shown through flashbacks. Seeing Sophia's backstory is very compelling, and I know I've said this many times before in my previous reviews, but my word, Kristen Milioti, I looked up several interviews and have now corrected my pronunciation of her surname because I want to get it right, she deserves all my respect, is such a talented actress. Over the past few weeks, she's gone from someone I knew nothing about to one of my favourite actresses of all time. Her range is outstanding. Throughout this episode, you witness her transformation from an innocent person to a victim of corruption and abuse, eventually emerging stronger, but not necessarily in a good way. She's very much taking control of her life because she's been manipulated and mistreated by all these powerful people she once trusted. The flashbacks start with her giving a speech about a foundation she's setting up, followed by a confrontation with a journalist who plays a key role in exposing all the terrible information about Carmine to Sophia. What's also effective in these early sequences is that we see the beginnings of the complicated friendship between Sophia and Oz. After Sophia meets with the journalist, who basically tells her that her father is responsible for the deaths of these women, she lashes out at Oz, saying, You're just my driver, know your place, even though they've been chatting like mates for the past ten minutes, and she's defended him when others mockingly called him penguin. You could explain that as Sophia being angry in the moment, not truly feeling that way about Oz, but in a later scene at the Falcone house, when Oz approaches Sophia, she responds, Oz, what are you doing here? In a manner that suggests she doesn't think he belongs in a room with such important people. I believe that's the moment when he realises she doesn't truly respect him, even if she wants to. Oz isn't entirely innocent, though, as he informs Carmine about Sophia's meeting with the journalist, essentially betraying her. But their dynamic or relationship is almost poetic, for lack of a better word. Initially, they took a liking to each other, yet in the present, they're now mortal enemies, even though that was never their intention. Oz told Carmine about Sophia meeting the journalist because he saw an opportunity to climb the ranks of the Falcone crime family, not because he had any real animosity towards Sophia. Meanwhile, Sophia separated herself from Penguin due to her different upbringing, her worldview, and how Oz simply doesn't fit into that life. Their diverging paths ultimately prevented them from remaining friends, if that makes sense. Mark Strong plays Carmine Falcone, and he is fantastic. When he questions Sophia, and she in turn questions him about her mother's death, expressing her suspicions, there's this moment where you can subtly see him, through his expressions, disowning her. He realises that with the information she's gleaned from the journalist and her suspicions, she has the potential to bring him down, so he has to act first. When Oz is driving her at night, the police intercept them, taking her away to Arkham. Carmine has retaliated against Sophia's disobedience by framing her for various crimes, including the murder of the journalist, which happened off screen. The scenes in Arkham are incredibly frustrating, but in a good way, as throughout this episode we see good old Sophia, once innocent and naive, gradually broken down 
piece by piece. The guards are clearly on Falcone's payroll. They unchain certain inmates, provoking them to attack Sophia in brutal ways, and they repeatedly shock her until she passes out. They even manipulate the inmates to harm themselves and then blame Sophia, subjecting her to further punishment through more shocks. It's infuriating because you're watching this woman endure the absolute worst treatment. Eventually, Carmine succeeds in breaking her as she does end up taking Magpie's life, who appears briefly in this episode, giving the guards a solid reason to keep her confined to Arkham for a decade. She later wakes up in Julian Rush's house and it's as though she has been reborn. Up until now, she's been focused on finding her brother's killer, but now that she knows the truth, she can move on. Granted, she's still very much set on running Gotham and getting back at Penguin, but she now has a sense of closure and can truly reflect on what she wants. We see her eliminate what I believe is the remainder of the Falcone family, and she does it effortlessly, using carbon monoxide against them. I appreciate that she spares the little girl. I think it's because she sees a bit of herself in the child and wants, in her own way, to free the girl from the toxic people surrounding her. I've seen the outstanding ratings for this episode, and they're well deserved. I hope that after this series, Kristen goes on to achieve unprecedented success because she's genuinely a talented actress and we don't see many like her these days. There are those with true talent, but they rarely land prominent roles or get their names out there. Kristen, however, is doing a remarkable job. She conveys a vast range of emotions, primarily through her eyes, but also her voice. She comes across as a classically trained actress in that sense. She truly understands the art of acting. As I promised at the beginning of this video, I'll now share my thoughts on episode 3. The way this show is structured allows me to review the episodes out of order, in a way, because while episode 4 is very much Sophia's episode, episode 3, to a lesser extent, is Vic's. He steps up in more ways than one. We see the onset of the Flood from his perspective and how it's tore apart, not just him but more importantly his family. There's a moment where you think, ah, oh, he's done for, but he manages to get out of it. That moment comes when a cop approaches Vic, who's sitting in Penguin's car looking suspicious. The cop takes money out of Vic's pocket and Vic calmly replies that he doesn't have any money, asserting that the cash in the cop's hand is actually the cop's own. Quick thinking. There's also a scene in a restaurant where Vic stutters and a waiter tries to assist him, but Penguin puts the waiter in his place, allowing Vic to finish his sentence on his own. It's such a powerful moment because Penguin doesn't see himself as a victim, and he sees a lot of himself in Vic, so he refuses to let others treat Vic that way. However, their relationship becomes strained in the last 10 minutes or so because Vic plans to run away with his girlfriend and Penguin finds out. He's deeply hurt because he thought he and Vic were building a solid partnership but Vic's plan to flee makes it seem as though he doesn't really value their work and has a poor opinion of Penguin and the life he leads. It's so powerful because you want these two to be the best of friends and partners even though what they're doing is wrong. As the audience, we understand that Penguin does care for Vic. I'm not ready to say it's unconditional, though, because knowing Oz, if he had to choose between his life and Vic's, he would undoubtedly save his own. Still, he cares for Vic in the way a mentor cares for his student. Episode 3 is a phenomenal instalment. I'd say episode 4 is just a notch better because it's mainly centered around Kristen Milioti and she's simply fantastic. But episode three really makes me appreciate Vic more and I'm sure he'll continue to be a standout for the rest of the season. Tell me what you think about all of this in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Take care.